so the ISWC, uh, the presentation is very simplistic as the uh, standard itself, as uh, Mark mentioned, uh, the ISWC is uh, the identifier for the uh, uh, musical works and it only represents the uh, abstract creation, so the basic information about the uh, work, the musical work. Okay? There is, of course, a lot of uh, technology out there, a lot of uh, uh, processes, database, and, and, and complex systems to deal with uh, all these, but in the end, it is just a number that represents uh, a work. Uh, the uh, official name is uh, International Standard Musical Work Code, the ISWC. Uh, it is an ISO standard. This is the uh, 15707, and it was approved as an ISO standard in 2001. So it is a very old one although, uh, I mean, it is uh, becoming more relevant uh, these uh, recent years. But we've been working uh, within the societies, the CMOs community with the ISWC for many years. Uh, CSAC is the ISWC international agency, uh, which is appointed by ISO, is the registration authority for this identifier. Uh, within the structure of ISO, uh, that has uh, many hundreds or even thousands of uh, different standards. We are part of the TC46 uh, Subcommittee 9, that is uh, the family of uh, uh, identification and documentation identifiers. Uh, we are the registration authority, but we don't assign any ISWCs. We have this task delegated to uh, registration uh, agencies, uh, that cover uh, all territories worldwide. These are usually, uh, or these equal usually a CMO in one territory. For instance, in, in uh, Italy, it would be uh, CI, or uh, uh, in UK, uh, it will be PRS for music. Uh, but there are also some other hubs or uh, joint efforts where uh, one hub represents several uh, CMOs or covers a uh, full territory like, uh, for instance, Central and South America. The majority of countries are covered by LaringNet. There are actually more than 100 uh, societies, uh, collective management organizations, that exchange ISWC information every day. We also have some other partners because societies have a direct link with the publishers and publishers are receiving ISWCs from societies at the time they are registering works. And of course, there are some other uh, workflows uh, where the ISWC is involved with or without societies. There are currently more than 40 million uh, unique ISWCs. These are, I think the last count is uh, roughly 41 uh, works that have received an ISWC and are unique works. Okay, there can be more ISWCs. I will explain because, uh, as uh, Mark said, uh, there can be more than one uh, identifier for the same item. This can happen because of the rules of allocation of an ISWC. A work can get more than one ISWC. That's why we have internal processes to reconcile the information. So if we find that there is more than one ISWC that has been allocated to one work. We keep one as the preferred ISWC, and this is the one that is reported later on, and the other one will be archived. We don't delete this ISWC because it can be in circulation at any time, so we provide means to get to the preferred ISWC from the archived ISWC if this has been uh, sent out at any time in the past. There is a lookup service that you can check anytime. Uh, that is the iswcnet.csac.org. Uh, it is a website where you can search uh, all this information. I mean, you can search by the ISWC and you will retrieve the related metadata. And you can also search by, by metadata and you will receive the ISWC. Okay? This is how it looks like. Uh, in the written form, it will have to be preceded by the word ISWC. 
that is the code identifier. Then there is the letter T, nine digits, that is the uh, work identifier, and a check digit at the end. It is a very simple structure. And this is how you can search the lookup service. If you go to this uh, ISWC net at csac.org uh, and you search for the uh, ISWC, you will retrieve this work. Indeed, this is a valid ISWC. It is the first ISWC that has been assigned and it represents Dancing Queen by ABBA. Okay? So you will see if you uh, retrieve this work. Uh, the title of the work as it is standardized in the systems because there can be more than one title. Usually we use the original title. Then you can see uh, the creator's names as they are registered in the IPI system. That is the uh, uh, database that CMOs use to identify all the writers worldwide. You can also get the uh, creator ID that is indeed the IPI name number that represents that creator. So you can also search by IPI name number if you know the IPI name number or from this search you can do a second search and you will, you will retrieve all the catalog, all the works that has been written and received an ISWC by that writer. And the role, that is also a mandatory field. The role is a, a creator, a compo composer, a lyricist, uh, the, the different values that are allowed for the registration of the work and the uh, assignment of ISWC that are described as part of the standard. If you go into the details, you can get more information like uh, some other possible alternate titles and uh, some other extra information that is provided by the uh, uh, submitter of this, of this information. So, uh, at the time of assigning an ISWC, not all works can get one. Uh, so the eligible repertoire is any musical work, of course, published or unpublished. The big majority will be unpublished works out of those 40 million, indeed, irrespective of its copyright status. This is very important because uh, there is um, a belief uh, out there that uh, to get an ISWC, uh, you have to provide the uh, shares of the work or the uh, publishing information. This is not necessary in any case. As the creation is uh, independent from the uh, copyright information, as soon as you have all the writer's names, their roles and the affiliation and the original title, an ISWC can be allocated. Also, a modified version. Uh, can be a, a, a version that has been, for instance, a translation of the lyrics into a different language, uh, or an excerpt, for instance, a movement of a classic uh, uh, symphony, or an opera, for instance, that is very popular and it gets uh, 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 released differently, uh, or a, a composite, like medleys, for instance, they can get a different ISWC, different from the original work but there has to be a reference to the original work that we keep in the database. So, as I said a minute ago, the uh, descriptive metadata that is needed to assign an ISWC is the original title, all creators with their respective roles, and the type of derivation, if applicable. If there is an original work, no need for uh, any indication in, in this regard. With this information, we can assign an ISWC. Very simple. How this works usually? Uh, it happens at the time of registration that an individual writer uh, registers the work with the uh, CMO or the registration agency and uh, a publisher uh, that may send information to the, to the society or registration agency uh, by different means, usually by electronic means like the CWR files that you probably know uh, already. Uh, this musical society, the registration agency, will 
assign an ISWC depending on the uh, rules that I explained and the uh, possible reconciliation of this information with some other uh, registers that may come from different sources. So when this is being assigned, the information is uh, uploaded to this ISWC net and it is ready for dissemination because it is published and then disseminated out there. So some of these dissemination processes are already in place, some others are to be delivered very soon. The, um, well, internally among all the uh, societies there's been these uh, uh, processes in, in, in place for many years, so they've been exchanging uh, ISWC uh, information uh, for a long time. The technology and the systems and the uh, networks that were available uh, in 2001 when the system was uh, uh, put in place in uh, production uh, did not uh, permit, uh, let's say, that we could have uh, some sort of a central systems that were uh, performant enough uh, to uh, really deliver uh, real-time ISWCs to uh, registration agencies at the time. So we uh, based our work on what we call ranges. We assign uh, ranges to the registration uh, agencies. So uh, let's say that, for instance, in the US, uh, it is very common that a work uh, can have a writer that is a BMI member, another writer that is an ASCAP member. So this work would qualify uh, to get two ISWCs by these two registration agencies at the same time. It is not very common, but it can happen. Uh, because they used to be, uh, uh, they used to have a joint effort, let's say a joint system to register uh, the ISWCs, but I mean it can happen. So this exchange also allowed for the reconciliation of the information and the uh, application of the process I, I explained before uh, to uh, uh, assign a preferred ISWC and archive the other ISWC. Nowadays we have a system that is the uh, central search index, that is a database that holds all the uh, uh, ISWC metadata information and uh, basically 90% of the uh, registration agencies are assigning centrally and we are uh, moving to a full 100% assignment of uh, the uh, new ISWCs by this central entity in the next months. This will uh, avoid any other duplicates or uh, any issues with the metadata. Uh, another dissemination process that is the uh, uh, most common uh, with publishers is at the time of uh, registration of new works, when they send this CWR file in the acknowledge files, at the end of the process they receive an ISWC for the works. Then. Uh, we are now, um, well, delivering some new services to, uh, to the publishers uh, that are not, these services are to supplement those that are already provided by societies, that are the main channel, uh, the exchanges between publishers and the uh, societies. We are going to supplement that uh, directly from the central ISWC international agency. The first service is the quarterly refresh file. Uh, this is not new. Indeed, this is available uh, for a few years now and many uh, publishers are already using this service. This is a list that we provide quarterly and this is a full list of all the ISWCs in which we make the link between the archive and the preferred ISWC. So publishers can download this file and they can run it internally in the systems and if they have archived ISWCs that they don't know they are archived, then they can replace them by the preferred ISWC. The second service that is uh, being released in April uh, this year is what we call the resolution service. This is uh, a service to uh, supplement or uh, uh, let's say confirm, validate uh, the ISWCs that publishers have in their uh, back catalogs. Uh, it is not a service to assign new ISWCs, it is a service to confirm already existent ISWCs that have been previously assigned to works. So 
by an EDI file or a light version of the CWR that we also allow to use this format. A publisher will submit a file to this service. The file will contain the basic metadata of the work with or without the ISWC. We will run this file and if we find that the uh, work already exists in the system, we will return the preferred ISWC. This service is uh, uh, running under very strict matching criteria. So if we can find more than one match, which is possible because the information we require, we require is the basic uh, ISWC uh, reference metadata, uh, we will not return an ISWC. There is a second version that we will release very soon. We are still uh, working on that, in which we will explain back or we will report back uh, which are the uh, error codes or uh, what are the possible error conditions uh, so that we can continue on a second uh, review and uh, get the right ISWC for that work. And there is still a new service that we are going to release, hopefully, uh, by Q1 uh, next year. Uh, this is now under development and it will be finished, the development, in well, mid-December, more or less. Then we will have uh, to go through the UAT phase and there will be a soft launch with a few publishers and uh, a few registration agencies. It is what we call the uh, allocation service. And yes, this is to allocate new ISWCs to new works. So the uh, uh, very excellent news about this service is that we will be able to return a new ISWC within the 24 hours. Uh, today, sometimes a work uh, may need to wait for maybe one week, sometimes even more, uh, to get an ISWC if uh, there are some conflicts with the data, if uh, not all metadata uh, is available at the time, uh, because there are more than one agencies involved in the registration of the work. So with this service, if all the reference metadata is present, we will be able to return, allocate an ISWC within the 24 hours. Uh, the goal after the service is released is to have a real-time service that will be able to allocate an ISWC on the fly. We have another project that is with uh, uh, DSPs and aggregators. This, well, this started a few years ago, but uh, officially it was launched. Uh, it was launched two years ago, more or less. We were working with several partners. Uh, I can only name one that is currently active. We are working with some more and will probably go live with some more uh, very soon. BMAT, that you will probably know. Uh, this is the partner that has already uh, gone uh, live uh, with the dissemination project for uh, these sort of companies. Uh, the matching process here is uh, slightly different and more complex because we are not uh, comparing work metadata and work metadata. We are comparing recording data with uh, work metadata. And that is a problem because uh, we receive, usually receive the title and the artist name and we have to match that uh, to a uh, work uh, that has writers and uh, some of the information that may not be present in the uh, 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 data we receive from the DSP or the aggregator. So the, the matching rates here are lower than with the regular uh, publishing community. Uh, but with the help of these uh, DSPs and aggregators and the technologies they use, uh, to disambiguate the recordings and the fingerprinting, whatever, uh, we are uh, creating these uh, links uh, with the um, uh, DSPs IDs and the uh, uh, ISWC information. So given that you have the service to uh, return ISWCs to publishers, 
and it sounds like you're making a connection between the sound recordings and the ISWCs. Uh, does that mean you expect in the future that you'll have a service that returns a combination of ISWCs as well as ISRCs and related? Uh, well, in, indeed, we are not linking the ISWC and the ISRC. We may or may not receive ISRCs. Uh, we also have ISRCs that we uh, get from societies. Uh, but what we link is the uh, DSP ID and the ISWC. The asset that we receive from that particular DSP and or aggregator. So let's say uh, if it is BMAT, BMAT will send the uh, metadata with the uh, BMAT ID. What we link is the ISWC with the BMAT ID. There might be one or more ISRCs that we can consider for the uh, uh, matching if we have uh, some other information that we can use uh, to uh, uh, disambiguate the uh, matching, but we are not linking the ISRC and the ISWC. Jose, um, I just wanted to make sure I understood what you said earlier. So for the resolution service, what I thought I heard you say is that this is to confirm that your current matches of musical work metadata is linked to the proper ISWC. Right. And then the allocation service is for brand new works. Exactly. So do you in fact have something where we can submit a list of older musical works in order to return the ISWC right. that is currently, Correct. and how does that work? You have, to find, you have to sign up for the service and then uh, we will provide the specification. It is an EDI flat file or a CWR uh, light specification and uh, we send you up for the service and uh, you submit the file and it is uh, everything automated. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, indeed this is, this is something that we wanted to provide because uh, sometimes there are uh, changes or uh, uh, sales, uh, purchases of catalogs, and sometimes the information is uh, uh, lost in between. So we don't need to go through a new registration process for that works. I mean, if, if, if we receive the file, we can confirm, okay, we know this work already, and this is the IWC for this work. That's awesome. Um, one more question. Your 40 million, do uh, your 40 million unique ISRCs, do these... ISWCs. ISWC, sorry. Does that include the archived ones? No, no. These are the these preferred are the, ones. These are the preferred yeah. ones. Okay. Ar archived Thanks. ones, there are not that many. There are just a few, indeed. But these are the, the preferred, only preferred ISWCs. Thank you. Just one question for clarification. Uh, is it still a requirement that all collaborators on a musical work be members of a performing rights organization? Well, they need to have an IPI number. So they have to be a member of a PRO. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. I mean, we, we need to know, uh, today we need to know uh, if uh, this collaborator is a John Smith. We may have more than 15,000 John Smith, and we need to know which one is that John Smith. And that's the only way why we require the uh, IPI name number. Only to finalize that there are some other um, circuits or workflows. We know that some societies are also providing uh, ISWCs as part of their invoicing mechanisms when they uh, claim uh, their rights in the uh, uh, DSR reports by some DSPs. We know that they are returning back some ISWC information. And also, uh, some publishers may be uh, feeding uh, ISWCs uh, through direct licensing processes or some other ad hoc processes. So what we are trying to do here is to uh, really uh, supplement uh, all those workflows by providing the necessary tools that you can use to validate and to assign a new ISWCs. I think that's it. Questions? Any other question for Jose? Yes, there is one. Sorry, I apologize. I already asked about the ISWC to ISRC, and you're telling me you guys aren't quite doing that. You're close with the BMAT. Um, 
Is there anything similar with regards to audiovisual works? So ISAN to ISWC is... Sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, is there a similar relationship that you make um, to ISWCs to now like BMAT and DSP providers, um, but to a audiovisual work for, uh, I'm thinking production music libraries where they're affixed inside audiovisual no. works? No. No? Not, not to audiovisual works. Well, to, uh, in the audiovisual, uh, what we do, uh, I mean, we, we administer, we manage an index that is the QA sheet uh, index. Uh, that is the, 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 the music part of an audiovisual uh, production. Uh, but we don't have the QA sheet. The QA sheet is uh, administered by the society. What we have is an index. And of course, within the QA sheet, uh, there are a number of works. And those works uh, should have an ISWC. So there is a different project, uh, a project that we are uh, well now uh, doing with a, a big number of publishers. I'd say this is uh, well. This has been there for at least uh, two or three years because it is a very complex project uh, in which we are trying to harmonize uh, the uh, provisioning of uh, uh, QA sheet uh, information uh, between publishers and societies. And uh, the ISWC, of course, and the uh, uh, musical information that is contained in the uh, QA sheet is very relevant for this project. Uh, but we, we are not doing any other thing. Uh, uh, at that level. Okay, thank you. Um, what is the process for signing up to the the services? So, for example, what Carolyn was talking about yes. is being uh -huh. able to pull data from you on. There is an uh, email address that is a pubnet p u b n e t at csac org pubnet at csac org. You just simply send a message, you tell us who you are, and we will return the uh, uh, sign-up documents. Yeah, I mean, just to uh, uh, add on that, uh, we usually uh, circulate all this information uh, through the uh, publishing community, the uh, ICMP, and the IMPA reflectors and the uh, uh, other uh, national uh, publishing bodies, uh, IMPF, uh, IMP, all those, they usually circulate this information because we discuss these topics um, at two different uh, um, structures we have. One is the Society Publisher Forum, that is uh, between publishers and societies with uh, ICMP and uh, IMPA. And uh, uh, there's also another project we have that is the cross-industry initiative that also includes the creators. So we uh, circulate these uh, newsletters uh, about new projects and how you can sign up uh, for all these services. So, uh, I mean, I don't know if you are subscribed to, uh, to uh, those uh, local uh, or, or, or uh, let's say national bodies, but you should receive information from time to time. Also, I mean, the CSAC website is uh, uh, relevant for this. We usually publish any news or uh, uh, we announce new services through the uh, CSAC website. Um, we're here today representing ISAN Canada. So just um, to refer back to the gentleman's question uh, earlier, within the ISAN Canada or within the ISAN database, we do have the facility to store the ISWC or ISRC within the ISAN, the registered ISAN excuse me, ISAN work. So um, we've got at least the reciprocal <laughs> issue going on in the, uh, in the ISAN world. Any other questions? Yes. Um, it's become a common practice for a lot of the PROs to, uh, in the audiovisual space, to roll up all of the cues within a, in, a, in a production, let's say a film or TV show, uh, and, and just say main title and then cues, and they're all wrapped up together. Do those individual cues on the cue sheet end up with individual codes? Uh, they may or may not. There is a, a best practice uh, for the uh, roll up cues 
that is now being discussed within this uh, joint effort with the publishers. Okay. Not, not up, I mean, not um, validated yet, but the best practice is now being discussed. Okay, thank you.